Hello and welcome to the last episode of Valor Unseen, Gallantry Unknown. This is Andreas, the director for this documentary. If you've been watching all or some of our episodes so far, thank you. Over the course of making this documentary, we became personally acquainted with Datuk Leong. I'm certain most of us are aware of the super cop in movies, television, comics, and other entertainment media, bringing the bad guys to justice in all sorts of ways. It was our honor to meet a real life super cop, Senior Assistant Commissioner of Police, Datuk Dr. Leong Chi Wo, learning about his outstanding career and meeting three of his former colleagues who are themselves accomplished policemen. Unlike the fictional super cops of the silver screen, Datuk Leong's heroic actions are real. He was responsible for dealing several crippling blows against the Malayan communist terrorists across Malaysia and even in neighbouring Thailand. Over the span of his career, from 1950 to 1984, he was a constant thorn in the side of the communist terrorists. The communist insurgents were finally defeated in 1989, making Malaysia one of the few countries to decisively defeat a communist threat. But the conflict took its toll, with hundreds slain and a government expenditure of over 1 million ringgit per day to combat the threat. Over both phases of the communist insurgency, Datuk Leong was there as a solid wall upon which the communist storm broke. His outstanding contributions to national security severely disrupted the communist plans for the country. No doubt that defeating the communists was a team effort, and everyone involved played their part. But without his crucial input, many of the operations would not have been as successful as they were. Working with Dato is uh is a privilege, which uh, I think quite a lot of uh, other officers uh, are envious about. In particular, the police officers, because most of them do, do not know what's going on, and at the same time are deprived of, you know, uh, the workings of E3 or E3F. And suddenly, you know, out of the blues, there is a success report coming out that you know, so and so was uh, killed and whatnot. You know, the success. And this was uh, envious of many uh, an officer, including my military officers also. The operations he planned were noted for eliminating key elements of the communist equation. Had this not occurred, the war against the communists would have taken much longer and extracted a much higher price. Operations Juggler, Paraku, Ginseng, Kelong. These are just four operations where Datuk Leong's planning and execution totally destroyed the communists' plans for the area and set them back months, even years, in their campaign. He and his men infiltrated communist cells, dressed as the enemy, and behaved as them so convincingly that he shared meals and slept in the same camp as the communists. He set up an intelligence network codenamed Bamboo among the Orang Asli in northern Perak and Kelantan. He hunted down the killers of Tan Sri Ku Chong Kong, the chief police officer of Perak, murdered by the first mobile unit of the Malayan People's Liberation League. Appointed head of the Kuala Lumpur Special Branch in 1976, he put a stop to the communists' reign of terror in Kuala Lumpur over the next few years by eliminating their assassination squads and carrying out Operation Ginseng to wipe out the communists in the capital. And he was the founder of the E3F, the secret special branch unit charged with protecting sources and conducting operations. The E3F would go on to be the premier unit within the police force for tackling the communists. If there is no Datuk Leong, I don't think there will be operations like what we did. Because uh, Datuk Leong has got a very good experience 
You see, he served two two emergencies. The earlier emergencies uh, uh, that from 48 to 1960s, uh, he was already in service. And then he was involved right from the beginning on operations against the communist terrorists. So his experience, he brought into the second emergency. Actually, uh, when you talk about the second emergency, the special branch need people like Dr. Leong to be around to start thinking how to tackle the cities again. Dr. Leong is, uh, is known for his uh, uh, planning and things like that. Uh, I could say that so far, whatever he has planned, he's been successful. So that's why when you talk about uh, fighting the cities, we are lucky to have Datuk Leong. Otherwise, it would have been a problem. But uh, to have the experience, practical, and uh, and uh, really planning it uh, from the beginning, I think nobody could have beat him. If one thing stands out in Datuk Leong's career, it is that he achieved the surrender or captures of hundreds of communist terrorists with very few kills. He understood the value of information and that dead men tell no tales. But he had also developed an understanding of them. He wanted to rehabilitate, not kill. This approach would pay great dividends. Many of the Ethria's original members were handpicked by Datuk Leong from the ranks of surrendered enemy personnel and would go on to serve with distinction. He had done his job so thoroughly that he could trust his former enemy to serve in his unit and to have his back. Many ex-communists alive today owe a debt of gratitude to Datuk Leong. But most importantly, Malaysia owes a debt of gratitude to Senior Assistant Commissioner Datuk Yong Chi Wo. His contributions to national security far exceeded what can be reasonably expected of any officer. He also brought humanity into an inhumane war. I have spent my entire career as a policeman fighting for the security of Malaysia and the safety of her citizens. My 34 years were spent bashing through the jungle, chasing the enemies of Malaysia and routing the raid menace in urban areas such as Kuala Lumpur and Ipoh. I retired knowing that I did my best and my contributions made the country a safer place. I am proud of what I and my men in the E3F have achieved to this end. I believe no one unit from the security forces achieved as much as E3F. The E3F was not a bloodthirsty unit as it captured communists, thus preventing further potential loss of life among the civilian population. I am happy now that the story of the E3F can finally be told. As that, I can tell my story as well. My legacy is what one makes of it. The results speak for themselves, bringing many communists out of the jungle, getting information from them, and putting an end to many of their nefarious plans in this country. Sure. I butted heads here and there with superiors, other commanders. But as the saying goes, you can't make an omelette without breaking eggs. I had a gun and used it at times. But many of those I took out from the jungle, I did so without firing a single shot. There are many instances like that. My mouth has gotten me into trouble in the past, but it has also aided me greatly in achieving my job objectives. So you see, 
There are many ways to win a war. If anything, the government should thank the police for saving them a bundle on bullets and bombs. I do feel sad when I see the current generation not really understanding what happened in the two conflicts. Yes, society moves on. But we must not forget the lessons of the past. Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. A popular aphorism, but so true. Once you gain an appreciation for those who came before, you will see the country with new eyes and appreciate what we have now. I do not hate my enemies. I believe that most of us are born good and somewhere in life are led astray or are manipulated into doing evil. There are those very few who are just born wrong and we took care of a few of those, but most people are good. If anybody feels my methods were wrong, I have proven otherwise. Each communist we took out from the jungle and rehabilitated was worth 10 seal in the jungle due to the intelligence they willingly gave us. I wanted them to rejoin society as productive citizens. These days, we are so quick to anger and hate. Let us not do that. Let us instead work together for the future of the country. But most of all, I want people to know that I did things my way. And now the end is near. And so I face the final curtain. My friend, I'll stay clear. I state my case, of which I'm certain. To think I did all that, and may I say, not in a shy way. Oh no, oh no, not me. I did it my way. Thank you.